Hello YouTube, D. Baudry here. Uh, this is, oops, I've got it upside down. This is a Lido Kala Lee 600. Um, like with the uh, Lee 500S, uh, again, it's got a very nice readable LCD. I definitely like the Lido Kala LCDs. Uh, the layout of information is nicely done, the contrast in the LCD is good. Um, that's probably my biggest favoriteest thing about the Lita Kala products is they've got great LCDs. Uh, you, you know, and, and also it's less real estate than like what the uh, XTAR VP4 Plus has in its LCD, and yet it displays more and it's still very intuitive and not overly busy. So definitely like the Lita Kala LCDs, and this one is not different than the Lee 500S. Um, then after that, I have to say that um, yeah, it's it is a better cell tester than the Lee 500S, but only slightly better. And uh, it still is really cheaping things out in places. So let me talk about the back side of the LCD first. And um, I'm going to try to make some comparisons between the Lee 500S and the Lee 600. So uh, I believe, I can't tell for sure because these parts are all scrubbed off, so I can't tell you what the part numbers are, but I'll bet you that's probably the same LCD driver that's in the Lee 500S, and that's probably the same op amp uh, that's also in the Lee 500S. You know, orientation on the board's a smidge different, but same sort of thing, you know, ribbon cable is the same. And then there's this other chip which doesn't exist on the Lee 500S, and I'm guessing this has probably got some uh, buffer RAM in it, um, it's probably uh, it's probably got some uh, TTL control logic and it may be a little bit more brain pan up on top of here. I don't really know because I can't tell you what the chip does. But uh, yeah, you've got the same layout as before. You've got this the four capacitive touch buttons and this little op amp is reading all of those and converting those analog signals into digital signals, probably feeding them into this chip so that uh, you can then get uh, digital control uh, off this thing from capacitive touch. So. That's pretty much everything that's there. Bottom cover is pretty much the same thing as the 500S. You know, pretty much basic ABS plastic. I forgot a detail on here. So this is new from the 500S. Uh, the 500S only has two temp sensors, and now you have four. Woohoo! Wow! Congratulations, Lido Kala. You uh, didn't chintz out on that one. I mean, PTC temp sensors are so expensive. All right. So um, here is the main board. And uh, the top side is very, very similar to the uh, 500S, and the bottom side is only a little bit different too. So uh, the ribbon cable, some parts placements, things like that is a little bit different because, well, you know, it's a di it is a different board with some different stuff on it, but uh, a lot of the things on here are virtually identical. So um, I figured out why they do this. So you've got two MOSFETs over here and two up here. Well, basically what this is about, and, and the same thing with the 500S. I thought it was really odd on the 500S, but now I understand what they're really up to. So um, these things don't vent heat very well. So basically what they did is they took the hot parts, basically MOSFETs, and they spread them out more. <laughs> also, uh, these ones here, which is like channel one and channel four, they have a small heat sink on them because those two channels are supposedly capable of more than one amp, or better, well, actually it's supposed to be three amps, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so yeah, they've got a little bit of heat sinking on them to help deal with heat a little bit better. Otherwise, uh, the only other real significant difference on the top side of the board that I see is that now you have four 220 microfarad 16 volt caps in those places where on the uh, 500S they're not populated. But otherwise, as far as like the beefiness of components and things like that, I would have to say this is pretty darn close to uh, what's in the 500S. Um, it can discharge at slightly higher amperage than the 500S. I think 500S can do 500 milliamp hours, and this can do 750, I think. Uh, so I'll talk about um, the uh, discharge path here in a second. But otherwise, this is exceedingly similar <laughs> in every other way to a 500S. Um, uh, in the 500S uh, up here, there was uh, five little dinky MOSFETs, and uh, I'll show you on the other side, they've been beefed up a fair bit. Um, so yeah, that, that discharge current path is now better than it was before. But uh, otherwise, th this is highly reminiscent of the 500S board. Uh, same little fiddly uh, inductors on it, you know, again, half the size of the ones that are in the uh, XTAR VP4 Plus. And, and that's true for everything here. Everything is, you know, half size. 
than the VP4 Plus. Why? Because this is a toy by comparison. Uh, the VP4 Plus is still a much, much better, even though this is a brand new product, the VP4 Plus is still a much better product than this is. Uh, it does have a lot more real, uh, ripple protection, um, or, well, let me rephrase that. It looks like it has more, but not really. So on the uh, 500S, uh, you had the uh, 12 volts in, and you had a capacitor there, and then you had a little board, and you had a USB port, so you have you know a five volt uh, you know charging port, and that's all been removed in the 600S, and now there's no capacitor over here, and that's basically because they moved it. So now you've got um, you know some more capacitors over here. These are all uh, you know basically controlling ripple on the uh, the four little DC to DC converters that you have. Uh, so that's good that that's there because it's not there on the 500S. And then you get a bit better, more capacitance here. So this guy right here used to be over here, and they've just moved it. And then before on the 500S, you had another electrolytic over here, you know, to help smooth out power. And then, of course, you had them on the uh, DC to DC side as well. So it, it is highly reminiscent of the 500S in many, many ways, um, with some slight beefing up because it does handle a smidge more current. So let's look at the other side. Okay, so um, on the 500S, I don't know what that CPU was because the chip scrubbed off and so is this one here. But uh, this looks like an STM32 of some kind to me. You know, slightly more brain pan than what was in the other one, than the 500S, um, because it's doing a little bit more. Um, on the uh, 500S, the, uh, the MOSFETs that uh, that, that were part of the discharge path were quite small. They were little tiny surface mount things, and now uh, that one, that one, that one, and that one, there are much larger surface mount uh, MOSFETs, and also the uh, resistors are doubled up. So um, I think I said that they were 5 watt resistors. They're the same value as before. They're still 15 ohm, and they're still like 5% resistors. They're, they're not precision. Um, so uh, yeah, you're, you're still dealing with the inaccuracies for current sensing, you know, for checking for cell capacity. Uh, but at least they're doubled up, so now this is really 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7 ohms, and you've got twice as many resistors too, which explains why it is that this can handle more current. Um, and, you know, of course the larger MOSFETs too, but otherwise, pretty much everything else on this board, uh, other than some u use of some different chips, uh, you know, Rather than what was done on the uh, 500S, they used some slightly different chips that do the DC to DC conversion part of it. Otherwise, this is a 500S. It just is. There's really not any tremendous difference. You know, you, you've got four PTC temp sensors, you've got these extra caps, you've got heat sinks, um, you, you know, slightly different layout, um, bigger MOSFETs and bigger shunts, and otherwise it's a 500S. <laughs> Oh, bigger brain pan. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't see anything in here that is proper cell IR detection circuitry. Um, and and I, I honestly think that the way they're doing it is they're faking it. Um, you know, Ohm's law voltage divided by current equals resistance. So I think they're probably doing something like that. They know what the cell voltage is. Uh, they know what the current draw is through the cell, so voltage divided by current gives you some kind of resistance, and then they display that as the cell's IR, which is not really how that works, but, you know, whatever. <clears throat> and, anyway, um, the Lee 600, uh, it measures cell IR three to four times higher than what both of my XTAR VP4 Pluses read for cell resistance. Um, so like this NCR 18650PF, which is a 2950 milliamp hour cell, um, will read like say 15 milliohms on both of the VP4 pluses, or or be like 14, 15, 16 milliohms, you know, depending on exactly how I am on the context. But you know, it would be like that. It'd be pretty close. And then on here, it'll be like say 60 milliohms. <clears throat> I have also tried a, uh, a cheapy two wire uh, milliometer and it also reads 15 milliohms. So I'm going to say, you know, two XTAR VP4 pluses and a cheapy milliometer all reading the same internal resistance as cells, that's probably a 15 milliohm uh, internal resistance. And that this is wrong. Way wrong. Four times, three times wrong. Anyway, slightly better 
over the uh, 500S. Um, but otherwise, this is same old Lido Call of crap. It's uh, not very good. It's still a toy. It's still very lightweight. It's still chintzy. It's still, you know, about half the quality as far as componentry and build quality and things like that of the VP4+. Plus. It, it, if I can tell you this over and over again, this ain't it. Buy a XTAR VP4+. Plus. You know, the couple little things that I like about it, namely the more information on the LCD and slightly more readability, things like that, this doesn't... This doesn't make up for it. Those don't, things don't, because it's still a lighter quality build. Also, um, the VP4 Pluses, both of them work the exact same way. You set them up however you want, put cell after cell after cell after cell in the thing, and it just keeps doing whatever it was you last told it to do. Whereas, just like the 500S, the uh, Lee 600, um, when something is done, you pull the cells out, drop in new cells, you have to tell it to start all over again, you know, reprogram it with all whatever it was you just had going, because it won't remember. It just kind of like resets, loses its mind, and starts all over from scratch again. And I find that highly annoying, because there's a very, very, very high chance that I want to do the exact same operation on the next set of 18650s that I just did on the new set, right? <laughs> or I, I, what I just did on the old ones, I want to do it again on the new set. And with this thing, you've got to set it all up over, set it up all over again each time you put in new cells, and that gets kind of tedious and annoying. Um, so yeah, there's th there's details like that, and the 500s had the same problem. Uh, so yeah, don't don't buy a Lido Kala. Just don't spend a little bit more money and get a VP4 Plus. It's still way better.